Good morning. Welcome to chapel at the Institute of Lutheran Theology. It's good to have you with us today. The Reverend Timothy J. Swenson here from Brookings, South Dakota, the headquarters of the Institute. Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Father in heaven, you are the source of every blessing. You deliver to us your gracious goodness. It's new every morning. So stir up your Holy Spirit in us that we taste of your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and go to work willingly for our neighbor. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is from the 17th chapter of 1 Kings. Okay, it went dark. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And when she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said to him, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The Word of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Elijah delivers a promise to the widow at Zarephath. The Lord has sent Elijah deep into the territory of Baal, who is known locally as Melkart or Eshman. Zarephath neighbors Sidon, the hometown of Jezebel, Baal's champion in Israel. As a consequence of Israel's apostasy under the leadership of Jezebel and Ahab, the Lord has caused a deep and abiding famine to come upon the land. Baal, a fertility god who was worshipped so that the crops would grow, has no power to break this drought. The drought's severity extends from Israel to the land of Tyre and Sidon. Severity such that even a wealthy widow 
She owns a house with an upper room. A wealthy widow faces death from starvation. That we may eat it and die. Elijah delivers a promise to the widow at Zarephath. He promises that neither the flour nor the oil will run out before the drought ends. She has the Lord's word on it. The promise delivered by Elijah delivered the three of them, the widow, her son, and Elijah, from the certainty of death. By starvation. There in the presence of the enemy, there in the very shadow of death, there the Lord set before them food for their table, an inexhaustible supply, new every morning. Elijah delivers a promise to the widow at Zarephath, but it has a condition. Oh, it's not a condition in the way you'd normally think of a promise being conditional. In order for the promise to be true and fulfilled, the widow has to use the promise. She must stake her life on it. The Lord has commanded her to feed this prophet whom he has sent. The widow knows that to feed the prophet and herself is to use up the last remaining bits of flour and oil. There will be nothing left for tomorrow. The widow acknowledges this, that we may eat of it and die. The widow receives the promise that neither the jar nor the jug will be spent. Every time she empties them to feed Elijah, her son, and herself, there will be more for the next day. They will never lack, though they eat it all day by day. Elijah, the widow, and her son must live like the Israelites as they wandered in the wilderness. Each day manna came to them in the morning and quail came to them in the evening. Each day they ate up their one day's supply. Nothing could be carried over. If they tried, it went rotten and wormy. Day by day they were forced to depend upon the Lord's faithful provision for survival. Day by day, the three at Zarephath and the Israelites in the wilderness used up the last of their provisions and waited, waited on the Lord for deliverance. Each day they used up the last of their fruits, giving themselves over in faithfulness to their Lord. They were forced to practice Last fruits giving. Last fruits giving is in contrast to first fruits giving. You know, that kind of giving every stewardship program tries to instill in you. Give off the top. Give what you plan and whatever you do. Don't give merely leftovers. This is the giving enshrined in the first fruits sacrifices of the Old Testament. This is the giving that has you look at your abundance and give from there. This is the giving of a rich and prideful people who used to say to themselves and others, look how much I can give and still have enough to live on. This is the kind of giving the Pharisees practiced. This is the kind of giving Jesus watched when the Gospel of Mark declares. Then he sat down opposite the offering box and watched the crowd putting coins into it. Many rich people were throwing in large amounts, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins worth less than a penny. 
he called his disciples and said to them, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others, for they all gave out of their wealth. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she, all she had to live on, everything she had. The crowd was practicing first fruits, giving. The widow practiced last fruits, giving. First fruits giving looks at what you have and decides what to give on the basis of what you'll have left over. Last fruits giving uses all that you have and trusts in the Lord's faithfulness for more. On at least two occasions in your life, last fruits giving will be demanded of you. Every Lord's Supper is an instance of last fruits giving. The table set, the meal is served, and there are no leftovers to tide you over between the meals. Like Elijah, your preacher delivers a promise to you. You who live in the presence of the enemy, you who live in the shadow of death, you will now live because the Lord has promised an inexhaustible supply of life. There on the Lord's table, the bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus will not run out before the time of faith has ended and your Lord appears in glory. You, who would rather look to the abundance of visibility, you must wait in faith until the next Lord's Supper until the next use of the means of grace, when the table is once again set and the meal is served. The second unavoidable occasion when last fruits giving is demanded of you is that day when you go down to the grave, when the dust returns to the dust from whence it came, the last fruits of your mortal existence get laid in the ground, in the ground where you must wait. Wait in the complete passivity of death. You must wait upon your Lord's faithfulness. Through your preacher, as through all of his preachers in generation after generation, the Lord delivers his promise, his promise to you. He gives you an inexhaustible supply of life, life in his name. And the Lord will see to it that you use this promise, that you depend upon his faithfulness. While you wait in the flesh, you must wait upon the means of grace. While you wait in the earth, you must wait upon the coming glory of the Lord. Your Lord will see to it that you are a faithful people because your Lord is the most faithful of lords. You have his word on it. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have placed your eternal word in our mortal hearts. So establish the presence of Christ within us that the threats of sin, death, and the power of the devil do not awaken a coveting within us, a coveting that overcomes our peace and destroys our anticipation of eternal life with you. Heavenly Father, you have placed your eternal word in our mortal hearts. So establish the presence of Christ within us, that the threats of sin and death and the power of the devil 
Do not disturb our satisfaction and contentment that we receive in doing our duty to neighbor and obtaining appreciation of this life in this world with them. Heavenly Father, look upon the Institute of Lutheran Theology as it prepares people to preach and teach your word as law and gospel. Give it success in its labors, support for its work, and students for its programs, so that a new generation of preachers may be raised up to deliver Jesus Christ and him crucified and him alone. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Enjoy the Lord. Thanks be to God.